What's good, Mass Gang? We here. NXT Battleground 2024, Las Vegas, Nevada, my current hometown. All right, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to talk about this six woman ladder match for the Women's North American Championship. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this match was a little bit better than I expected. For the most part, the competitors in this match are no names. I mean, you got Kalani Jordan, Lash Legend, Fallon Henley. You got um, Sol Ruka. You got Me Chan, Jada Parker. Um, and be honest, going in, the top two that I honestly thought had the best chance of winning that match was Sol Ruka and Lash Legend. I just feel like they wanted to hold, do the whole trick and last like you know champions they're together even though she says she can't date them no more or whatever um i just thought that would have been a pretty decent route going but what i can tell you that i did not expect i did not expect kehlani jordan to win why kehlani jordan yes she has the look she has the sweet and innocent look i mean that's her character but Kilani Jordan has no mic skills whatsoever, and her her ring in ring skills aren't that great either. I think Sol Ruka, at the very least, has a dope finisher, a lot like Ember Moon, where in a sense that there's no mic skills there, but that finisher is the star. Her finishing move is the star, um, and she performed that move off of a ladder. I said, yeah, this is who they should go with as the first ever women's North American champion, but it didn't play out like that. Kehlani Jordan was able to get the win. Um, she's nowhere near main roster material at this point. Like I said, she has the look. She reminds me of the pre-boss Sasha Banks, you know, also known as Mercedes Money, but the pre-boss version of Sasha Banks where Sasha was just in NXT and she was just, you know, just regular smeggler and, you know, not really good at cutting promos or doing anything in the ring. And, you know, that's how I look at Kaylani Jordan. But she's the first women's North American champion. So we'll see how that plays out. Another pretty good match was Axiom and Nathan Fraser versus the Good Brothers, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Um, Honestly, I'll just shoot straight from the hip. I really felt like Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson should have won this match. I think the world of Axiom and Nathan Frazier as far as like their in-ring ability, but I just don't like the fact that neither one of them has adequate mic skills. And um, yeah, they're, they're just not getting over with me as tag team champions. And I felt like with what's going on with AJ on SmackDown, I just felt like it would have been pretty logical if you went ahead and you put those titles on the Good Brothers going forward. But yeah, this is a good match. And once again, man, I can never, ever, never, ever hate on the in-ring abilities of Axiom and Nathan Fraser. They put them away. And personally, I just hate to see the Good Brothers lose this much because I, I fucks with the Good Brothers, man. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and lie. But, you know, they took another L. They took another L. So now they get to go to SmackDown, stand next to AJ. And by association, AJ looks a little bit weaker because Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson didn't win the tag team titles over on NXT. So I think that's also another aspect of the decision of the um, who would take the championships here. Um, but once again, um, and I've said this before, NXT's tag division is definitely not, not going through a renaissance right now. This is probably one of the worst tag team eras for NXT. I don't see any current team in NXT, and I'm really thinking hard. I don't see any current teams in NXT that I feel like can go up to the main roster and become tag team champions. I just don't feel that way. Pretty deadly 
I don't know if one of those guys are hurt or both of them are hurt or whatever, or if they're just being kept off TV. I feel like they had a way better chance to be the tag team ta champions on the main roster. And I haven't even seen them. So these guys that are currently in XT fighting in the tag division, they have no fucking chance of going up to the main roster and making any noise. Now, I don't know what the general consensus will be for this match. And I'll also say that I've seen most of them, but I haven't seen all of the underground matches. But Lola Vice versus Shayna Baszler underground match. This is the best underground match I've ever seen. And I think a lot of it had to do with instead of you having two wrestlers pretending to be mixed martial artists, you have two wrestlers that are mixed martial artists so all the moments in this match where they're doing hammer fists spinning back fists putting on the submission moves like they already have like the natural instincts to do a lot of that stuff and i think that it blended really well with this underground match now i also want to say that i think it would have been a lot better if they fought each other inside the fight pit I haven't seen a fight pit since Matt Riddle left, but um, I think this would have been a very good place to do it, but they wouldn't have been able to do a lot of the cool spots that they did in this match if it was a fight pit match. But this, yeah, by far, this was the best underground match I've ever seen. And I mean, if you could argue, if you want to argue with me, go ahead and do it in the comment section. And um, I think they picked the right choice for who should win a match. Um, I hate to say it. It feels like the ship on Shayna Baszler becoming as big as we thought she would become back when she was in NXT and winning championships. It feels like that ship has sailed. So if that's the case, you're going to go with the, the competitor that's more active, more popular on social media, the one that has the look. She's probably going to get called up soon um, in Lola Vice. And I think she was the right choice. And her and Shayna Baszler had a, a pretty damn good match, in my opinion. I bet there's going to be some people that said, oh, that match sucks. Because for the most part, all underground matches sucks. So, I mean, the bar isn't necessarily high on this being the best underground match. But I was thoroughly entertained. And I did like a lot of the strikes that happened in the match. I liked the way the performance put on the match and i like the way the match was set up so i was entertained so this is a win for the underground match and lola vice and shayna baszler triple threat match north american championship wesley joe coffee obafemi this match was dope i'm not even gonna lie this match was awesome in every respect um, but the biggest, biggest, biggest takeaway from this match is just once again, and you could, I'm not glazing. I swear I'm not, but it feels, it feels like I've been talking about this dude for a year now. Every chance I get Oba Femi, man, how can I, okay. How can I articulate what I want to say here? Because I don't want to overdo it. Because y'all definitely finna say I'm glazing when I say this. But I haven't seen physicality and power like his since I've seen since Brock. It's like he doesn't have Brock's athleticism, so don't get don't get it twisted. But in terms of like catching dudes out of the air, just seeming more physically imposing in the ring and asserting his dominance over another man Obafemi he has it like he could go to the main roster imagine if it was Obafemi instead of Omas that was with MVP that would make a lot more sense because Obafemi is realistic Omas statue stands there can't really sell moves or nothing Obafemi has everything Omas didn't and I don't know what MVP is doing. I think he's injured or something or where he's at. But what I do know is that when you call up Obafemi, you might really want to consider, you know, dusting off MVP and putting him by his side because 
Obafemi has it in spades. I'm telling you. He's my biggest takeaway from this match. Just like he just dominates everybody, man. And it's going to take, I don't know what it's going to take for him to lose that title. But yeah, man, Obafemi, still the champion. Obafemi, bright future. For me, Jordan Grace versus Roxanne Perez was the match I wanted to see the most in this event. Um, It's the unique opportunity, I guess you could say Forbidden Door. To open a Forbidden Door with WWE and TNA to have its knockout champion, Jordan Grace, appear on the show. Right off back, this was a very, very, very physical match. And if you look at Jordan Grace and Roxanne Perez, they were both fucked up by the end of this match. They were both battered and bruised. This is a match with excellent wrestling. Just like, it was just great. It was a great watch. Um, I'm a little bit bummed out because honestly, man, I wanted Jordan Grace to win because I felt like that would have made the WWE TNA crossover even better. I have no clue how deep they're going to go into this crossover. I do know that we had an appearance by Ash by Elegance. I think that's what she's going by in TNA, formerly Dana Brooke. Once again, commentary did the same thing they did with Ethan Page. It was like, isn't he from AE? And he did the, isn't that Dana? And, and then, you know, he corrected himself. So, I mean, I feel like he always does that. So people who like can make that, you know, connection, um, figure it out. But um, yeah, man, Dana Brooke, Ash Violet gets a pair. She looked a little bit different than she did when she was in WWE. I think it's because of her gimmick in uh, TNA. It's like, I guess like, I don't know, snooty pampered, you know, so, kind of similar to like what Tony, Tony Storm is doing, but like, Without like the the vintage talking and the black and white shit, but um, yeah, she appeared. Um, Tatum Paxley interfered in the match, so I'm starting to think now that maybe they're gonna send Tatum Paxley over to TNA, have her challenge Jordan Grace, which I have no clue how that makes too much sense since Tatum Paxley has done nothing in NXT that would suggest that she should be able to go over to another promotion and challenge for one of their top titles, but I digress. But again, really wanted Jordan Grace to win this match, not because I don't like Roxanne Perez. I think Roxanne Perez is great. I just think that there could have been a better story attached to Jordan Grace winning the NXT title, uh, Women's Championship. And But they went the other route, and I think they're going to have another little small crossover. Um, and we'll see how that goes. And I'm recording this as the show is going on so i'm hoping we see another tna surprise in this event um we'll see all ego ethan page trick williams nxt championship eh, this match kind of went exactly how i'd expected it to go they needed somebody that came off as an unknown somewhat credible threat and Ethan Page to go in there and, you know, get beat by Trick Williams. And that's all it pretty much was. I don't know about the rest of you, but I kind of knew there was a 0% chance that Ethan Page was going to come in and shock the world and beat Trick Williams. It just wasn't going to happen. But I mean, that's why I really wasn't looking forward to this match. They should have had Jordan Grace... And Roxanne Perez main event, the main event, because this match, there wasn't much to it. Everybody knew Trick was gonna come out, come out, come out on top. Then you get Sexy Red coming in after the match. That instantly told me that there wasn't gonna be some surprising and unexpected like invasion angle involving TNA. So I mean, to me, and it's just to me, Ethan Page, Trick Williams. That match was a complete letdown. Like, nothing really to get excited about. It was excited when Ethan Page showed up, but yeah. 
kind of knew he wasn't going to win this match. Very anticlimactic the way it ended. Went off abruptly. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to say here. Um, and that's pretty much that. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking us out on this review of NXT Battleground 2024, Las Vegas, Nevada, UFC Apex Arena. And I'll catch you guys next time. Mass Gang, we out.